More than 41 million people visit Las Vegas each year. The city of neon lights is a major attraction for tourists from across the world, mainly for gambling, entertainment, and of course, this day for Time the Knot. I was married a couple times, but this one is a keeper. Go! I love, I love you, you for all you are. <laughs> this is my fourth wedding. I want to waste. Pull it, pull it, pull it. Since the first wedding in 1909, nearly five million people have said I do within these glittering borders. We're getting ready to get another couple married. <laughs> they say marriage is not to be entered into lightly. I need alcohol. But in Vegas, anything goes. Your hunk of hunk of burning love. <laughs> Your hunk of hunk of burning love. Yes! So from the lavish to the low key, stylish I to contemporary. I'm gonna lose it, but don't lose it. <laughs> Come on, hold it together. <laughs> there really is no place quite like Las Vegas to get hitched. Hi, I'm Michael Bartlett. I'm 29 years old and I'm from Carrollton, Georgia, and I am an architectural student. And I'm Erin May. I'm also from Carrollton, Georgia, 30 years old, and I'm a graphic designer. And we are getting married. <laughs> Woohoo, going to get our marriage license. <laughs> When did you first tell me you loved me, Michael? Because my story is different from yours. I mean, I think that it's a little, the facts are a little different. Apparently the first time I told Erin that I loved her was me being drunk after the bar, but I don't remember that. I think we shame. were both drinking, yes, but I wasn't like intoxicated. This place is only eight minutes away from our hotel, which is a nice walk. So the first time Michael told me that he loved me, we were sitting on the end of his bed, like we are now, except for I was in your spot. And he was just like, I love you. <laughs> and I was like, I love you too. You said that it happened in the kitchen. Yeah, it was in the kitchen. No, it wasn't. I was sitting on a stool. Yeah, and then we actually went right back out afterwards. Yeah. Okay. We'll leave it up to everyone else to decide who's telling the truth. We have, on average, about 80,000 couples that come into our office a year to get a marriage license. You have to come into our office to begin your journey together. Welcome to Las Vegas. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Weddings in Las Vegas add about $2 billion annual to the local economy here, so they're very important to us. It's very important that we do our best to serve our customers right and that they have an awesome experience in, in having their wedding here. Thank you. Where are you guys getting married? We're getting married at the Neon Museum in the North Gallery. Oh, fun. I think he was just, he brought her. He was dating her. He was dating her, but we hadn't known about it yet. Right. And then he brought her and yeah. just mentioned her as, hi, this is Erin, mom, this yeah. is Erin. But it was probably maybe the second or third time he brought her and they, they actually said they were dating. It was his girlfriend that in the back of my mind, I knew that was my future daughter-in-law. <laughs> when Erin told me that she got engaged with Michael, I get this long MOM in big capital letters going across the text, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And I looked at Zen and I said, she's either pregnant or she's engaged. <laughs> One or the other. And she sent me a picture of her engagement ring. And I lost it. I cried, I was happy, I think the neighbors heard me. Um, it was just, it was, it was the moment I, as a mom, was, had been waiting for, for sure. Have a happy wedding. Thank you so Thank much. You're welcome. So I guess we officially became a couple on July 31st, 31st 2014. And ever since then, it's just been full steam ahead. Yeah. So we've been happily living together for about four and a half years, and he popped the question yeah. about a year ago. New York City. New York City. On top of the Empire State Building. I 
always told Michael that I would be able to tell when he was going to propose to me. Oh, what? <laughs> this is really happening. I had no idea. I did it really quickly because I thought she was going to, you know, catch on to what I was doing. Oh my God, it's so pretty. Wait, I'm like, sorry, I'm <laughs> I was taken aback because I'm not ever surprised. I didn't know what was going on. You know, long story short, yeah. I said yes. And here we are. Yeah. Here we are. Las Vegas is a popular wedding destination for Brits, and 5,000 miles away, another couple are getting ready to fly out and get hitched. Hi, my name's Rob. Uh, I'm 49, and um, I'm from Newcastle in the UK. I am a facilities manager. I'm Emma, and I'm from Newcastle as well. I work in a finance office, and we've been together five years five now. Five years coming up, yes. I first met Emma at the works Christmas party. Saw her across the table and thought, right, I'll have a bit of that. <laughs> and no, it's just, but we'd been working together a few years. For a few years, but I hadn't, I hadn't hit onto her, this kind of thing. Before we got together, mm -hmm. we were both with other people, so nothing happened straight away, did Yeah, it? I had to keep a distance. So, yeah. Until... You were available. Until that night at the Christmas party. Yes, took me a chance. Good luck. <laughs> you probably know better than me now, actually, to tell this story. Because I was just kind of wrong. You just asked us to dance. Asked you to dance, that's what I did. Yeah. Didn't really know each other that well, did we? Not really. Mm. So it was just a, um, my magnetism <laughs> on that <laughs> night. <laughs> or alcohol. Or alcohol, probably a bit of both. After we got together, it was a case of introducing the kids to each other, wasn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. It was a big thing, that one, actually. Well, let's do kids be parents. Yeah? Uh, parents don't stand a chance. I remember my mum telling me that she was seeing someone else, and I was a bit nervous at the thought of meeting him, but then she said that he had um, a daughter who was my age. So it kind of bit, made it a bit more exciting, thinking that I was going to have a stepsister. It's a good one. Oh! oh. <laughs> Grandma. It was weird because we were so close in age that we would clash on certain things, and that's what I was worried about, but we, we got on, we got on really well. Um, so it was nice, because, like I said, I had always wanted a sister, so it was nice to have someone to do the sisterly things with. One morning, he was just driving us to, like, sixth form, and I, he was saying, like, oh, I need to pop off here on the way, and I was like, right, OK. And he was popping into the flower shop, and I was like, oh, that's a lovely bunch of flowers. And he was like, oh, yeah, it's because I'm going to ask Emma to marry us. And I was like, oh, you didn't oh, okay, then. I didn't know that. No. I was at work, I got a bouquet of flowers delivered, saying, hurry home, because I'm taking you away for the night. Mm -hmm. And he booked a hotel, and he took me out for a meal and proposed there, didn't you? I did. So we've been engaged a few years yeah. now, though, Five. haven't we? Yeah. I'm going to start using this. It was her idea. Like you say, I was all over the globe at one stage saying, oh, should we get married in Greece? Should we get married in this? Should we do this? Just beat main 103. You need a strike and that's it. You miss, miss. Oh, dear. Knee pressure. Knee oh. pressure. Oh. And then, like you say... Over a few drinks. Over a few drinks. Oh, Rob, 50th Vegas. Yes, yes. If you get if you go to Vegas, I'll marry you. OK, then, right? And, uh, yeah. Held you to it. Mm hmm you did. I did. After Michael proposed to me, I really just wanted to elope. I didn't want to make it a big thing. And one day Michael came to me and he wanted to have a wedding. Yeah. And that actually, that was really cool to me. I was like, I wasn't expecting that. So um, I started looking up venues. We had previously visited the Neon Museum and I thought, you know, that'd be really cool yeah. to get married there. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And we looked it up online and they only had like elopements. Yeah. They didn't have really any like ceremony reception type deals. So one day I called up Ian, he's my contact there. How are you doing, you guys? Hi, Hi, yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet you.
and we worked out this package for me to have my wedding and reception there. I got a private boneyard waiting for you. We're gonna take a look. Like we could do that. It's the perfect mixture of everything. Yeah. You know, the glamour, the history and all that stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah, if you're ready. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do let's it. Go. Let's go. Yeah, so basically we're making history at the mm -hmm. Neon Museum. North Gallery, first wedding with a reception and ceremony. Here it is. Oh. I'm like seriously <laughs> so excited right now. You should be. This is your wedding venue. We're a big deal. <laughs> we're the poster children we're, of yeah. the Neon Museum North trend. Gallery yeah. wedding extravaganza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me first, me first. Ah! Oh my gosh! Look at this place. I love it. Erin is and always has been a very willful child. Okay, so I need to get my notes out. She's fairly headstrong. Guests can come in that way. All I need to do is be able to move through here. She'll always jump in head first on anything she does. So we're gonna have to get rid of the circle tables. Yeah. We can, we can do one long table. Erin's kind of not bossy, but she definitely takes control of things. Display station's gonna be right there. Welcome sign's gonna be right outside the door. She always has a very particular way of how she, she likes things, yeah. I guess. To be in the eye on real. No, 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 no. Once her mind is made up, you cannot talk her out of anything, change her mind. No. Yeah. Like there's a dance floor, there's the DJ. She's very stubborn, strong-willed. I didn't want this to be like completely open and blank. Oh, we could do two cocktail tables on each side. Sometimes thinking it comes after the action. Okay. The view. Wait, okay. what did you just say? <laughs> what did you say? What? I need to hear everything that comes out of Michael's mouth. <laughs> no, Michael, this looks like where the dance floor needs to go, for sure. Yeah, obviously. The Aaron-Mike dynamic would be Aaron tells Mike what to do, and he does it. We're confirming that it's OK that we can walk over the dance floor. You're OK with it, I'm OK with it. Okay. She's far more outgoing. He's a little bit more reserved, but she wears the pants. Our table can be right in front of Famous. Like, we could be where our backs are facing Famous. That'll work. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron runs yeah, the show she's, there. Yeah, she's the boss, for sure. OK, that's been changed. I, I need to change it to round, because it's going to go right there. There were a few tasks I put Michael on and had to <laughs> micromanage and end up doing it myself. Round table, half round table. We have the circle table surrounding us. Those are far away. Seven magic mountains. Michael, are you listening to my vision? I'm changing one of the tables to a smaller table for your friends. Do you even know how many tables we have? I did like 5%, she did 95%. Whoa! Okay, 98%. Yeah. No, Michael, we have to do one thing at a time. What did you do? What's your 2%? I, uh, I booked one of the rooms. Yeah. I did 99%. I'll give Michael 1% <laughs> for booking the room. Uh, that's funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With their wedding just days away at the Neon Museum, Erin and Michael relax on a night out in Fremont Street, just off the Vegas Strip. Meanwhile, back in the UK, there is just one more thing for Emma to do before she gets hitched to Rob, and that's find her perfect dress. What are you fancy, Emma? Um, lacy and fitted. Kate, That's what Kate I've got in my head. <laughs> Can't wait to see Rob's face when he sees Emma going down the aisle. She make the most beautiful she bride. Will, yeah. That's quite, quite nice. nice. Yes. I hope he cries. Definitely. Oh, he definitely will. He definitely will. I'll put him in the eye if he doesn't. <laughs> Has Rob got an opinion on all of this? Well, he keeps dropping hints that you want to see, but no. You're not going to let him see? No. You can tell. He just adores her and he just beams when he sees her and I'm expecting him to do that when he walks down the aisle because she'll be stunning. You're going to look amazing. So yeah, that's what's going to blow us away. Are you ready? We're ready. Yeah. The dress that she's chosen is absolutely gorgeous. Oh my God. Emma, that's the best one yet. Yeah. And he will be, his jaw will drop when he sees her. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, Emma, oh, Emma, it's lush. That's definitely my favourite. I love it. So, is this the one? Yes, 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 y
Michael is with his groomsmen at a swanky Hawaiian cocktail bar. And across town, Erin and her mum Leslie have taken themselves off for a little bit of pre-wedding pampering. Cheers! Yay! Thanks for making this appointment, by the way. This is special. It is special because we don't spend a lot of time together. The distance gets in the way. Yeah. Sure. He fell in love with you the day he met you. And I know. you could not really care. I was horrible. You were horrible. Well, I was trying to, yeah. First time I met Erin was actually outside of a bar. One of my roommates was friends with her and introduced us and I was just like, hey, who's this girl? And uh, a few months down the road, actually we had a room open up in our house. And so Erin moved in and she was actually in the room across from me. I was like, okay, here we go. It's mission, mission <laughs> challenge accepted, I suppose. <laughs> But no, I remember back in the day, this has probably been three or four years ago, right? talking to you. Yeah, yeah. So after the original Aaron meeting, when did you know that Aaron was the one for you? When did I think Aaron was because the one? I think before you left. Yeah, after you, you know, know you guys keep saying already. that. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. Obviously, subconsciously, yeah. obviously, I liked her, but I had tuck tail. He invited me to an adventure, and I accepted. <laughs> so <laughs> after Mike and I lived together for about, I would say we lived together for six months. No. But I was the last roommate to move out, and he was really good about helping me move out. And it was during that time that I started feeling stronger emotions for him, and it made me sad because I knew he was about to move away to Utah. <laughs> When you moved to Utah, I remember a big thing. You wanted to, when you went back, you wanted to start dating there. I didn't really think of it like that, like trying to pursue her. I definitely tried to keep in touch, you know, through text messages and stuff like that, just to kind of be more so a friendship. It was just when I moved back to Utah, then things just kind of fell into the right, you know, positions. That's why that, how that worked out. And it was interesting. And now <laughs> look at us getting getting hitched in Vegas. Getting Las Vegas. hitched in Vegas. Yeah. When she oh, met, yeah, he, he had really, really long, long hair. <laughs> Yeah, and then a few years later he came back into town and they reconnected and she was like, you got a haircut. Like, he's so hot. Yeah. Like, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the haircut. Yeah. It's like, changed everything. He should never grow his hair back out. <laughs> you know what? The thing of it is that I love so much about you and Michael as a couple is the fact that he is so your opposite. You can be very demanding and you get that from uh, me. Uh, oh, really? I do? Yeah, you do. We both have a leg in the pan, I think. We balance everything out. We. We both make decisions together, or one you know picks up the slack of the other, pretty evenly. So mm -hmm. I say we're pretty well balanced. But you don't dis you don't oh, agree? I agree. <laughs> Nobody wears the pants. I've actually seen him wear her pants. <laughs> no. Yeah. It was Utah. It was Utah. Mike's an alpha. Aaron's an alpha. Somebody's gonna be a little bit you know louder. There's only enough air for everybody to breathe, and he's gonna get one more. At the end of the day, I feel that Aaron and I both have one leg in the pants. She picked the pants out. Exactly. You know, I'll exactly. take that. I'll take that. I am right perfectly fine <laughs> with you saying that. He's behind the scenes running the show, and I'm out front putting on the show. But we are equally contributing to the show. <laughs> so I'm the man behind the curtain, really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Back in the UK, and with their bags packed, there is time for one final drink before Rob and Emma jet off to Las Vegas. I remember getting a phone call off Emma saying that they had been planning Rob's 50th birthday. They had said, oh, why don't we get married when we get over there? It started small, wasn't it? Just mm -hmm. me, you, the kids. And I just said, well, I don't think it would count as a wedding if I wasn't there. <laughs> so absolutely, I'll be yes. there. And then your best friend told your other friends and our friends. I thought, hmm. Vegas is such a long way away, but you have to celebrate it. <laughs> and then when the word got out... Then everybody else wanted to come. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think any of us got invited. I just think we all said we we're coming. Got bigger and bigger, because every time I went out to a party or wherever, I invited drinks, somebody else invited to... invited somebody else. Yes. <laughs> Could have been even bigger if Could everybody come who you invited when you were drunk. Yes. Your mum's still coming. It's your first time in Vegas, man. Yes, yes. Yeah. It was his idea to get married actually on his birthday. Right? It's actually going to be Rob's 50th birthday when we get there. More could he ask? 
What's that present like? he couldn't yeah. exactly he couldn't have asked for anything better. that's why none of us has gotten him one hasn't it because yeah, he's getting exactly. them a... I've, i just thought it would be easy to remember the <laughs> anniversary <laughs> i'll be honest and i thought yeah why not cheers everybody and i'll see you on business thank you cheers thank you With a little hangover looming from his boy's night out, Erin has arranged a little treat for Michael, a session on surfing simulator, Flow Rider. Well, you ready to watch me surf? Bust my butt. I'm so ready. I'm ready to watch you not bust your butt, because like I said, we don't need a broken leg before our wedding day. But I would like to see you impress me with your moves. We'll see what I can do. <laughs> Oh man! It's gonna be exciting. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh, Hi. Hey, how's it going? How's Good. How are I'm you? Matt. Nice Michael, to nice meet you guys. I'm Aaron. Nice to meet you, Matt. So are we gonna be serving today? He uh, is. Just okay, just one of you. Yeah. yeah. No problem. So have you ever surfed before in yeah. the ocean? Yeah. Just a long time ago, about ten years ago. Gotcha. How good were you? Sorry. Yeah. All right. Good job done. Gotcha. <laughs> well, it's. A little bit different, yeah. kind of similar, but a little bit different. It's definitely a balanced sport, so. Yeah. But we'll get you on, get you riding, shredding today. Let's cool. do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Sweet. Just don't break a leg, Michael, or tomorrow's wedding could be in jeopardy. Come on, babe, you got this. Oh my god. Oh, look! Oh my god! Rob and Emma have jetted into Las Vegas with their wedding party and waste no time in getting stuck in to see the sights. But at Flo Rider, Erin has a nervous wait after fiancé Michael took a terrifying tumble. Oh no, is he okay? Neither of us had been to Las Vegas before, which was why you wanted to go there, yeah. wasn't it? It's just a bucket list. You've got to do Vegas once in your life. Yeah. Oh. Like the like the fun things in life and yeah. they bring that like aspect out in each other, don't Definitely. and the bounce that the, yeah, the, the bounce, bounce off each other. Each other like, so. Two literally like the male and female version of each other. Like there's no better way to describe than that. Obviously it was strange to adjust to see my mum with someone who wasn't my dad. But it was clear to say that we're both happy. Like, like I said, they're both very laid back people. They just never seemed to kind of disagree on anything. So yeah. it was quite easy to kind of be happy about it because I could say my mum was happy with him. All well, happens tomorrow, young'un. Oh, well, can't wait. Can't wait? It'll be an experience. All our planning for yes. the last year. It's all going to be over tomorrow. I hope it all goes well. Well, as long as you turn up. I turn up. <laughs> right. It's actually our most iconic hotel casino here in Las Vegas. This is actually the Caesar's Palace. That's massive as well, the Caesar's Palace. 
absolutely huge that place. Alright, see so this would be a stop you want to check it out. Of course, on one side you have the Bellagio, on the other side is the Mirage. Our families have merged together really, really we, well. Yeah, and I think that's really helped with kind of seeing the like happily ever after type yeah, of thing. Yeah, because there's nothing there to suggest that there would so be any problems. It's so weird how well our families have both came together and merged. So like, it's all really settled in it is. Yeah. It's just like, they you can like, imagine now, it's like, it's like we are family now. Like. Yeah, definitely. We're going to have to come back because we're not going to have a chance to see, see everything. All of us. Yeah. So the next time we come, we'll just come just to gamble and enjoy ourselves. The big day has finally arrived for both our couples. And whilst the finishing touches are made to the Neon Museum for Erin and Michael's special day, across town, Rob and Emma prepared to say I do at Chapel of the Flowers. We are a traditional, beautiful location. We have that, that quaintness of being a little chapel on the strip in Las Vegas and provide really beautiful services with still that Las Vegas charm. When I was looking at the chapels, I wanted to find one that wasn't like too tacky. Yeah. Like, I didn't want an Elvis. The chapel that's been here the longest is the Victorian Chapel. And that one is probably the most traditional and the one that people really think about when they think of a little white chapel on the Las Vegas Strip. So the Victorian Chapel seemed like really nice. Check the reviews. Classy, check the reviews. And we we'll think, well, I hope we've made the right choice. Mm -hmm. Chapel First to arrive in style at the chapel is Rob, along with his best man and mum. He is quickly whisked off to avoid seeing his blushing bride. Getting married for me is just the icing on the cake, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think so. Just brings together yeah. all again. And Mr. That's and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. and the whole family's together again as a, as yeah. a one unit. That's the that's the big thing for me. Even though we're not traditional, it'll just be nice, I think. Yeah just to be Mr. and Mrs. Yeah. have the same name and yeah. I suppose that is a bit old fashioned, isn't it? <laughs> Things happen. Across town, non-traditional couple Erin and Michael haven't got long before they get married. Right. It's 3.30, everybody should be arriving. Yeah. 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 With the ceremony due to start at four, Finishing touches are being made to the venue so the wedding can start without a hitch. Yay! We're here, guys. One person who is ready and eager to officiate his first wedding at the Neil Museum is Reverend Bob Dempsey. I have uh, I've been doing this for about three years and, uh, you know, I really like to not just show up and be uh, generic uh, with anybody. I mean, it's their wedding ceremony, and I know it's Las Vegas, and I know, you know, a lot of times, you know, you think that it's just going to be a slam bam, thank you, ma'am, kind of, uh, you know, in and out kind of uh, procedure. But I really like to make it this personable and as happy for them. Hello. How you doing, man? Hello. You look great. Hey, you look amazing. It's funny that Aaron is getting married at a museum, not a church, but Aaron's not traditional, and I believe now that we know Michael's not either. Hello, Aaron! Oh, it's so nice to meet you. Oh, how wonderful. I really hope and pray that they have a long life together and that uh, they bring beautiful children because they will have drop dead gorgeous children into this world. This is this. All right, with you, that I introduce yes. this? Yes, I love that. This name? I'm so excited here. for you to introduce that. Okay, yeah. Well, some people don't take the name. And, uh, I, I'm taking know, it. There we I'm go. I'm taking it and running. Good deal. All right. Mike would never do anything to hurt Aaron's feelings, like, ever. He's the most committed man ever. So how, how is marriage going to make Mike more committed? He's a thousand percent. 
He's already he's per, he's already the perfect husband. He's not even married, so he, marriage will not change him. With all the guests having arrived and the wedding due to have started, there seems to be an unexpected delay to the proceedings, which have not gone unnoticed by the stringent Erin. Okay, wait, like this needs to start. Like, I got a whole plan. People don't care if you're late. You're glowing. No, you're okay. the bride. You're the bride. Yeah, you're supposed to be late. To be late. Yeah. Just in that spot. I'm just, oh, yeah. You know why it's don't, not? Don't touch it. You look amazing. It's starting late. It. it was supposed to start at four. With her wedding running late, it's starting late. It was supposed to start at four. Erin is unaware that the holdup has been caused by an incident at some of the dining tables. Organizers must quickly swap out the tables before bride Erin finds out. Erin is extremely particular. Yes. So I'm very, very happy you were able to get things back to normal. Yes. <laughs> we have lots of ministers here who perform ceremonies on a daily basis, and each one of them really has a little something special about them that makes each ceremony unique. But Diana tends to stand out in my mind because she's got that little special twinkle in her eye. Oh, you look so cute! She really embraces everything that the couple wants for their wedding day and goes above and beyond. Oh, look how beautiful you look! Welcome, gorgeous. Great to see you. Which is, you know, sometimes hard to find. Um, so we have a spectacular team, but she definitely holds a gold star in my heart. Signature witness. Okay, perfect. Thank you. My name's Diana Moran. I am a wedding celebrant slash officiant here in Las Vegas, Nevada. May I come in? I have been in the wedding business for about 15 years. Nice to meet you. Can I give you a hug? Yeah. You look gorgeous. I'm so happy for you. I love meeting the couples and finding out their love story. I think their love story is always my favorite thing. But stay with me here and trust me when I tell you, I'll be your calm. All right. I'll help you throughout the entire thing. Great. Okay. Robert? Yes. Hey, how are you? Very good, thank you. Are we sure this is your gorgeous bride in there? I hope so. <laughs> I've, I've never seen a red wedding dress, but she oh, looks beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what I love about the Brits when they come over to get married. They are just truly dapper dressers all the way around in every sense of the word. This is for your pocket, just in case she gets a little sand in her eye. Okay. What do you do? Because okay. we're in the desert. Yeah, yeah. Think maybe your trouser pocket, yeah? Yep. Our couples come from all over the world, so we broadcast the ceremonies live. So for a grandmother who isn't able to travel from afar to be here, they can actually sit at home and attend from afar, which is pretty unique. I've got your son, it's my best man, and I've got my daughter's boyfriend, Matthew, who's going to be with your chef. And you have... I've got my seven-year-old granddaughter as my flower girl. I've got three adult bridesmaids, Rob's daughter, my daughter, and my best friend. Because my son was Rob's best man, I asked my best friend's husband to walk me down the aisle. Keep your feet planted so you don't step on her dress. I'll then say you all may be seated and you may have a seat, okay? Because I've known him quite a few years. I think if anyone's going to get emotional, it's more likely to be Rob. Yeah. So I think if he starts crying, that would set me up. It'll be seeing the kids walk in, and then when Emma does walk in, she, you're going to look amazing. So yeah, that's what's going to blow us away. So I'll try and keep it together. Yeah.
Today is a day of celebration, a day of great joy, hope, shared love, and promise. Now let's jog your memories and go back in time. Do you too recall that very first time when your eyes met? Yes? Okay. I love that little giggle. That tells me you have a fantastic love story. I'd like you to hold those moments, those memories, near here. I'm going to go ahead and have you stare into these beautiful eyes here. Get lost there. And I'm going to ask you first, Robert, if you take this beautiful woman standing before you to be your wife, do you promise to love, honor, and cherish her all the days of your life? I do. And Emma, do you take this handsome gentleman standing before you to be your best friend, your protector, and your husband? Do you promise to love, honor, and cherish him all the days of your life? I do. Rob, your best friend. Mm -hmm. You too. You're my equal. Thank you. And we support each other no matter what we do. Mm -hmm. You are my best friend. You are funny. You are, she is hilarious, she is really hilarious when she's drunk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she's got a good body. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, what else do I say about you? You've got lovely eyes. Um, I think you should stop that. I'll stop, yeah. And I'm thinking that perhaps there's no better time than now, maybe? Let's wave to family and friends in the UK! <laughs> Perfect! <laughs> It is truly now my great honor to pronounce you as husband and wife. You may seal your promises with a kiss. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Leithard. Sir, walk your gorgeous bride down the aisle. Our message to them both is like just a thank you for bringing this whole family together because yeah. obviously now we all want big family. This first photo is going to be with everybody. So everybody come on up, pick your favorite side. We want to have such a fantastic life together because they um, made such a beautiful couple. He absolutely adores and she absolutely adores him and that's all that matters. On my wedding day, that's actually my birthday and I will be um, turning 50. Uh, and the best present of all will be Marion. This one. Yeah. Mm. All right. So, Brittany, I think we're done for the day, right? Yes, we are. It's a good day, right? I had a great day. A lot I mean, of exciting couples. When am I in next? Um, so you're back here tomorrow at 11.30 in the Magnolia. Okay, how and many do I have? You have four ceremonies Super and fun. I printed out your You're paperwork the best, for you. thank you. Perfect. I love it. Well, um, I guess that's the end of my day. All right. Bye. Toodles. Ladies, grab your bouquet. Oh, during the ceremony, I think I'm gonna get emotional. Oh, I already know. I was like watching her walk down the aisle. I feel like over the years she's just like evolved into like the best, most beautiful version of herself. Yeah. So really seeing has. it like all come together in full circle and like knowing their relationship from beginning to end, it's, it's gonna just gonna be like amazing to finally be like, okay, like you guys was, did it. Yeah. You're married. Good afternoon. My name is Reverend Bob Dempsey. We are in a a hallowed spot in Las Vegas. This is the marriage of neon gas and electricity, you know, <laughs> have made this city become uh, the brightest spot on the universe. Oh, yeah. What's he saying, what's he saying? Good. 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 Yep. Yep. Put your head down like normal. No. Yeah. All right, now we're ready to go, okay? All right, let's go. I feel like I was always in search of something my whole life. But there was always something missing. And I feel like when I met Michael and we became this couple, it was like I found that part of me that I could never find before. Beautiful. I think about you the first thing I wake up in the morning. I always think about you at night. I'm always thinking about you throughout the day. I can't ever imagine my life without you. 
This is me, babe. Yeah. This is me. <laughs> Why don't we all stand and welcome our bride? We are gathered here to witness Aaron and Michael make a lifelong commitment to each other, and we are here to celebrate their love, and we celebrate the beginning of this new family. And when we find someone whose weirdness is compatible with ours, we join up with them and fall into mutual weirdness <laughs> and call it love. Yes, amen. <laughs> We're going to now do the vows. We're gonna start with you, Michael. Awesome. <laughs> because from this day forward, Aaron will always have the last word. <laughs> That's true. Okay? Happy wife, happy life. Michael, do you take Aaron to be your wedded wife, to live together in marriage? Do you promise to love her and keep her for as long as you both shall live? I do. Aaron, do you take Michael to be your wedded husband, to live together in marriage? Do you promise to love him so long as you both shall live? I do. Uh, All over the microphone. Good. <laughs> Michael, take the ring and repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love. And faithfulness and to faithfulness you. And faithfulness to you. Aaron? I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and faithfulness to you. <laughs> by the authority vested in me by the state of Nevada and Clark County, it is my honor to now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to be the first to introduce you to Mr. and Mrs. Michael and Aaron Bartlett. She planned everything to the T and so everything came together so beautifully. Yeah. You couldn't envision it until it was here. It was perfect. Hey, the table's been good. Oh, I know. When I came in, I was like, perfect. Well, that was certainly different. My goodness. What, uh, what a great place. This is my first time at a neon museum wedding. It was great. I just uh, enjoy this so much to see the start of what a wonderful love relationship, you know, moving forward. How wonderful. the best wedding I've ever been to, and it's my wedding. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's awesome. Yeah. And also, this is one of my favorite songs, so I really think that we should go dance. <laughs> Love you, bye. Love you. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs>